Hello again. I'm Robert. I am Yudi. Welcome to Eastline English. This is our Advanced Business English Conversation Test Number Two. Why is business English so difficult to understand? The simple answer is that it is full of words and phrases that aren't commonly used in daily English. So what's the solution? The best way to learn these words and phrases is in context. Context means in the appropriate situation. For that reason, we have created ten specific business situations for you to learn the jargon, idioms, vocabulary, and phrasal verbs of business English. Directions: Choose the best reply to each question or prompt. If you want to challenge yourself, take this as a listening test. Close your eyes when you hear a new number or see a new slide. Number one. I have just been informed that there is a setback with the release date for our product. What exactly is the holdup? A. The research department informs us that there is an unknown chemical compound in the ingredients. B. Jeremy got held up in traffic this morning, so he has to communicate with us by telephone. C. We can sit back and hold up all of the product releases until further notice if necessary. D. There was a holdup at the bank. They got away with over a million in cash. Our first key word is the last word in the queue. Holdup. A holdup is the noun form for a delay. In answer D, we also have the word holdup used as a noun. The first sentence in answer D does not give us enough context for us to eliminate this as an incorrect choice. It's quite possible that a holdup at the bank could cause a setback in a release date. However, the second sentence is about a robbery, and the word holdup is also used to mean a robbery. So a holdup could be a delay or a robbery. And now we have enough context to eliminate D as a possible answer. In both answers B and C, holdup is used as a verb. Using hold up in the verb form also means to delay, so we must look elsewhere. Now let's look at the word setback in the prompt. Setback is another word for a delay, but it has negative connotations, which means it's associated with being negative or not good. Knowing that setback is a negative thing, we can delete C due to the context. The person asking the question about the hold up. Is looking for a solution, and answer C suggests a holdup as a solution to a holdup. Therefore, it's not correct. We have two choices left, A and B. Both of them could be possible. However, in all tests, we're looking for the best possible answer, and some tests have two answers that are possible, and one will be better than the other one. Jeremy is likely part of the team. The fact that he got held up in traffic could delay the meeting, but he has offered to communicate by telephone, which wouldn't really hold up the meeting. And we are looking for information about what is delaying the release of the product, not the meeting. So the best possible answer is A. An unknown chemical could cause harm to people, and you wouldn't want to take chances. With an unknown chemical in your product, the company would want to research that chemical further to make sure it's safe. The conversation should be. I have just been informed that there is a setback with the release date for our product. What exactly is the holdup? The research department informs us that there is an unknown chemical compound in the ingredients. Number two. Our customers have not been visiting our stores much recently. What's the best approach moving forward? A. Most of our customers now prefer to do their shopping online. We don't need them anymore. B. The brick and mortar model is outdated in this digital world. Let's progress away from it. C. Every solution has a problem connected with it. What's the problem? D. Perhaps we should move toward a brick and mortar approach. That should solve the problem. Question number two is presenting a problem and asking for advice. Let's highlight the problem. Answer A: 
suggests a reason why they're not visiting those stores, because they prefer to do their shopping through the internet. So far, so good. On the other hand, he also suggests that they don't need them anymore. Them means the customers. Every store needs customers, so this is either a terrible employee or a terrible choice for the answer. Let's get rid of A. C suggests that every solution has a problem. There's a follow-up question, what's the problem? But the problem has already been stated. The woman speaking has already identified the problem. Therefore, C is not a good choice as an answer. Both answers B and D have business jargon in them. The brick and mortar model or the brick and mortar approach. This is business jargon, meaning actual stores. Stores with product inside and a sales staff where customers can come try on the product and buy the product at that location. D suggests that they move toward a brick and mortar approach. And yet the brick and mortar approach is not working. People have not been visiting their stores. For that reason, D is wrong and B is the best answer. B not only addresses the problem and tells the reason for the problem, but it also suggests a solution for the future. Number two should be, Our customers have not been visiting our stores much recently. What's the best approach moving forward? The brick and mortar model is outdated in this digital world. Let's progress away from it. Number three. I'm happy to report that our plans have been put in place and the product launch is on schedule. A. That sounds great. I would like to join you all for that lunch. Which restaurant? B. That's good. I put that report in the place that you told me on your desk. C. What place are you talking about? Marketing told me that we have changed the location. D. I have heard the opposite. The rollout is behind schedule and no one is taking point. Our first keyword in the prompt is launch. A launch is the day or point in time that you release your product to the public for them to buy for the first time. It has nothing to do with eating. Answer A confuses the word launch with lunch. Although the sounds are quite similar, they are not the same. Launch is different from lunch. Therefore, we can get rid of A right now. Next, we'll highlight put in place. The words put in place are in regard to the idea. That means the plans have been set down on paper, discussed with the team, and have already begun. B and C refer to place as a location. B and C are incorrect. Our best choice is D. Even though the woman disagrees with the man, it's still the only choice that is appropriate to the context. Let's look at the word rollout in answer D. Rollout is a synonym for product launch. Next, taking point. To take point is a phrasal verb meaning to lead. No one is taking point means no one is leading the project or leading the launch. Even though the woman disagrees with the boss, this is the only answer that takes the product launch in context. Number three. I'm happy to report that our plans have been put in place and the product launch is on schedule. I have heard the opposite. The rollout is behind schedule and no one is taking point. Number four. Our sales have rapidly diminished through the past quarter, so I'm afraid the writing is on the wall for us. A. I do not agree. The economy is only experiencing a temporary slump. Things will turn around soon. B. There is no reason to be afraid. We have installed a security system with alarms for burglars and fires. C. That wall should not be used for writing. It is for slideshows only. D. I agree with you completely. Let's continue along the same lines. I'm afraid quite often means I'm sorry or excuse me. However, in this case, it could be an actual fear. 
Answer B does refer to certain fears, burglars and fires. The woman in answer B also suggests a solution to these two fears, installed a security system. Unfortunately, the fears referred to by the man have nothing to do with burglars and fires. They're about sales. The man fears that the company won't make enough money. Whatever they have been doing throughout the past quarter and probably before has not been working. Let's look at answer D. She suggests continuing along the same lines. This is business jargon meaning do the same thing. Considering that the man is suggesting that whatever they have been doing has not been working, D is not a good idea and not a good choice. Especially because she says that she agrees with the man. You cannot agree that something is not working and then suggest doing the same thing. Let's get rid of D. Next, we're going to highlight the writing is on the wall. This idiomatic phrase means the end is near or failure is coming soon. Because this is an idiomatic phrase and not a literal phrase, C is also wrong. C takes the speaker literally. She suggests not to write on the wall and use it only for slideshows. Diminished means to go down. This chart shows a line that is going down and going down rather rapidly. This red circle also shows what could be a slump. A slump means a period of time where the economy does slow down, sales may slow down, profits may go down. However, temporary means only for a short time. The woman is suggesting to the man not to be too concerned about something that may be temporary. Things will turn around soon means that perhaps the economy will get better and the business can get back on its feet. Number four. Our sales have rapidly diminished through the past quarter, so I'm afraid the writing is on the wall for us. I do not agree. The economy is only experiencing a temporary slump. Things will turn around soon. Number five. Maria is the best teammate I have ever worked with. She seems destined for a promotion. A. She certainly has a contrary way with people. Her promotion ideas lack coherency. B. Yes, she told me that she often has premonitions of being an underling forever. C. I couldn't agree more. I think she was born to be a CEO. D. I disagree with you on that point. She's likely going to be our boss one day. Number five is not a question. Instead, it's a prompt or several sentences that are asking for someone else to share their opinion. We'll begin by highlighting the word promotion. A promotion means to raise one's level of work responsibility and likely raise one's salary. But in answer A, the word promotion has to do with marketing. Not only that, but the words contrary and lack coherency are negative factors. So the man clearly disagrees with the woman's opinion, but doesn't say anything about disagreeing. Instead, he says, she certainly. That word implies that he agrees with the speaker and then uses words like contrary and lack of coherency that completely disagree with the speaker. A is not a good choice. Next, we'll look at the word destined. Destined is similar to fated, which means likely to be in the future. In answer B, the word premonitions also suggest the future. A premonition is a feeling about future events. However, after that comes the word underling. Underling is business jargon meaning someone who is inferior to or subordinate to everyone else or someone specifically. An underling is someone who takes orders, not who gives orders. B is not the best choice. Answer D has two sentences which present contrary information. Likely to be our boss one day means the same thing as destined for a promotion. But because the person disagrees, the two sentences are contrary or opposite. D is wrong. 
In answer C, I couldn't agree more does not mean I don't agree. In fact, it means I agree 100%. Even though the words was born implies the past, we usually use that to mean fated or destined to be something. C is the best option. Number five should go. Maria is the best teammate I have ever worked with. She seems destined for a promotion. I couldn't agree more. I think she was born to be a CEO. Number six. This unit seems a little steep at $500 per. I'm not sure it's doable. Can you offer us a bulk discount? A. It is steep, but if you buy only one, we can offer a 10% bulk discount. B. How about just buying the more expensive one? It is far more durable. C. This is certainly a very expensive unit. It is made in a modern factory with high-tech equipment. D. Unfortunately, we cannot, but we do have an installment plan for larger orders. Our first keyword is steep. Steep is slang or business jargon for very expensive. Answer C replies to that point. Even though it does discuss a very expensive unit, it doesn't offer a solution to the person's problem. Instead, it just adds facts as to the reason it is very expensive. Adding that information does not solve the customer's problem. C is not the best choice. Next, we'll look at the word doable. If you separate this word into its two component parts, do and able, it does mean the same thing. It means can be done. However, it sounds a lot like the word durable. Durable in answer B means it lasts a long time. Even though answer B may make sense on its own, the more expensive one would last longer, it does not solve the customer's problem. The customer thinks it's expensive at 500. Why would the customer want to buy a more expensive one? That's not a solution. B is wrong. A echoes the word steep, then offers a solution. However, we need to know the meaning of the word bulk. The word bulk means in large volume or many items at the same time. Answer A suggests a discount for buying only one. Even though it's a solution to the first problem of an expensive unit, it does not solve the problem for a large purchase. A is incorrect. Option D does answer the question and offers a solution. Installment plan. An installment plan is where a company or purchaser would pay over time. They would get the product and then pay in regular intervals. D is the best option. Number six. This unit seems a little steep at $500 per. I'm not sure it's doable. Can you offer us a bulk discount? Unfortunately, we cannot, but we do have an installment plan for larger orders. Number seven. I am not certain of the viability of doing business in that country. Does anyone know if the exchange rate there is stable? A. You can exchange currency in the reception area right next to the table. B. There are signs that a new government will soon take power and offer dependable regulatory services for their currency. C. That country offers the same exchange rate as the international banks plus one point. D. The rate is similar to the speed limit here. If we exceed that rate, we will only need to pay a small fine. First, we'll look at the words exchange rate. Exchange rate refers to the values of two currencies when compared to each other. If you are doing business with a foreign company, they likely have a different currency. Answer D also refers to rate, but rate as in speed. The woman is asking about money or currency, not about speed limits. D is incorrect. All of A, B, and C refer to the exchange rate of currency. A is a suggestion of where to exchange one's personal amount of money. A is an excellent response for a customer at a hotel who is from abroad and has foreign currency. But it's not correct in this context. 
Option C refers to an exchange rate at a bank similar to an exchange rate at a hotel for a person traveling to exchange their money for local currency. It does not refer to the concerns of the woman speaking. Viability means feasibility or possibility of success. She is not certain of the viability, which means she fears it won't work. Her concern is in regard to the possibility of a business doing well over long periods of time. In international business, you need stability. Dependable regulatory services are what the boss wants. If you are going to do a business in a foreign country, you need to know that their government will offer you something stable and reliable. Regulatory services follow laws. They follow rules. So if you are doing business with a foreign country, you want to know that their politicians or the party in power will offer you stability. As a business, you would want to know that the exchange rate would be stable over time. That way, you can depend on the amount of money you would get from the same amount of currency. B is the best option. Number eight. The amount of money that we have been spending on our phone plan seems extravagant. Can anybody here find a solution? A. Yes, I can. I believe there must be someone in this room who can solve this problem for us. B. I don't think that the phone plan is our biggest problem. We should fix it as soon as possible. C. I think that we could likely do away with that service entirely and communicate exclusively via the internet. D. I agree. But I think that the budget allocated for transportation is also quite low. Number eight states a problem and asks for someone to provide some advice or a solution. And although A starts well by saying, yes, I can help you, her solution does not address the boss's specific question. She just gives a general answer instead of taking responsibility and providing a solution herself. The boss's question is trying to identify who can solve the problem. A answers that she can solve the problem and then doesn't offer a solution to the problem. Instead, she says someone else must be able to solve this problem. A is not right. Let's now look at the word extravagant in the stem. Extravagant means too much. This word usually carries negative connotations or has a negative meaning. In answer D, the woman first agrees. However, she then provides contrary information by saying that the budget for transportation is also quite low. But the budget for the phone plan is high, not low. D is out. In option B, the speaker starts well and gives her opinion about the problem. However, the first sentence is contrary to the second sentence. If it's not the biggest problem, then why is she suggesting to fix it as soon as possible? C is the best choice because it provides a solution to the problem. Do away with means to cease using or to stop using. She provides a two-step solution to the problem. First, don't use the phone plan that costs too much, and then move towards a cheaper or free plan by using the internet. Number eight. The amount of money that we have been spending on our phone plan seems extravagant. Can anybody here find a solution? I think that we could likely do away with that service entirely and communicate exclusively via the internet. Number nine. My computer is working too slowly. It takes a couple of minutes just to process a single request. A. You had better clear the cache. Your computer's short-term memory is causing lags. B. It seems like your computer is certainly up to the task. It can process every request in a timely manner. C. Maybe you should try turning the computer off and working more slowly. D. Don't worry about it. I had that problem last week, so I asked my computer to process every request by hand. Let's begin by highlighting too slowly. Too slowly means slower than needed or slower than necessary, 
if the problem is that the computer is slower than necessary, you cannot go more slowly and solve the problem. C is incorrect. In B, let's look at up to the task. Up to the task means it's able to do the job. However, he then goes on to say that it can process every request in a timely manner. Timely manner means quickly. That is the exact opposite of what the woman said. B is not correct. In D, the man suggests a solution, but it's not a very good one. D is not the best answer. A has two words that could be considered jargon, cache and lags. In this context, cache means memory. Short-term memory is also known as RAM or R-A-M. And when that becomes full, you need to empty it. Causing lags means slowdowns. Answer A suggests a direct solution for the problem. The best sequence for nine should be, My computer is working too slowly. It takes a couple of minutes just to process a single request. You had better clear the cache. Your computer's short-term memory is causing lags. Number 10. I'm not sure if I'll be able to deliver this budget by the end of the fiscal year, and the deadline is fast approaching. A. All budget proposals should be turned in before the start of the next fiscal year. B. I was not aware that anyone in this office had died who passed away. C. Sandra in accounting told me that she was able to put her budgets together without the help of any of her team. D. Why don't you just ask for an extension? There are always funds available for small projects like yours. Let's start with the word deliver. Deliver means the same thing as to hand in or to turn in, and A does offer a synonym for deliver. On the other hand, option A is simply a fact that the man already knows. Next is deadline. Deadline is business jargon for the date and time due, the last time it is possible to meet the obligation or the last time it's possible to deliver or turn something in. It has nothing to do with a person dying. Passed away is a synonym for dying. However, it's not at all the same as deadline. Option C doesn't help the initial speaker. It is simply information about someone else turning in a budget. It does not address the problem and it does not offer a solution. D is a far better answer. Look at the word extension. Extension means that you get more time added to a deadline. That is a possible solution. The woman then goes on to give encouragement for the future. She says there are always funds, which means money, available for projects like his. There is a solution and encouragement of future success. Number 10. I am not sure if I'll be able to deliver this budget by the end of the fiscal year and the deadline is fast approaching. Why don't you just ask for an extension? There are always funds available for small projects like yours. Well, we hope that our business situations have helped clarify and teach you a few new business terms that you can use at the office. We certainly appreciate your attention and hope that you've learned something new. If you enjoyed our video, please like it and leave a comment. Thanks for spending time with us at Eastland English. Don't forget to subscribe. And when you subscribe, make sure to click on notifications so that you will get a message every time we release a new video. See you next time. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.